Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, today with a very special episode together with coach Neil Hill, Neil Yoda Hill. We have the chance to ask questions today, but first, introduce yourself. So I'm Neil Hill. Um, I've been in the fitness industry since I was 19 years of age. I'm actually 55 now. I actually thought I was four, 54 until one of my good friends reminded me probably like about four months ago. Um, so I started training when I was 19 years of age. I started coaching when I was probably 22, 23. So I've been actually coaching for an extended period of time now. Um, I'm just as passionate about the industry and bodybuilding as I was when I first started, obviously, all those years ago. 36 years ago, and the industry has changed immensely. Um, and I feel that the industry has changed immensely for the better. But there's also aspects of the industry that I don't feel are necessary positive. But it's not because of the industry. I would say it's so, so much more driven towards social media. And uh, even though the internet and social media has a has a lot of benefits and can be great tools to learn from. I also feel that there's a lot of conflicting inter information, which isn't so much the concern about this confliction. It's more the fact that I think there's a lot of false information. Does that make sense? Because you could have two athletes, you could have two people which are experts in their chosen fields, and maybe they have different thought processes. Does it really matter if the results are the same, which they're positive, it's not such a big issue, right? Because we could talk about the fact of conventional diet as opposed to um, somebody who is very much towards a ketogenic. At the end of the day, through a pre-contest prep, Mike, is that if the results are very similar in the sense of you're able to build muscle tissue, grow into a show, stay in a high sense of anabolism and lose body fat and be contest ready on contest day, does it really matter which is the process which you should follow? No, if the results are very similar, and obviously blood work are also taken into consideration as health and well-being. Um, but I just feel that there's a lot of noise out there on social media, and there's a lot of bad information out there on the internet. So having the opportunity of meeting people, even if it's a virtual portal like this, it's great because we can share our life experiences or our thought processes. You know, you're a very, very accomplished coach and athlete in yourself, as yourself. Um, and I think that you can you can speak with the voice of authority, so to speak, you know. And for me, uh, obviously, my competitive days were obviously set aside a number of years ago because of a really bad hereditary knee issue, which ended my career very, very early. But um, I was able to naturally transition into a full-time coach. And maybe if that injury didn't take place, then maybe I wouldn't have gone into the coaching realm as, as, as I have done over a number of years. But um, we've obviously been working together for a, a number of years. We've obviously got to know each other as athlete and coach, as friend as well. And I feel that I'm very blessed to have such an incredible athlete in the team. But also, Mike, I really admire the way that you hold yourself as an individual. I think that you're a very inspiring young man and I don't say that because you're in my house and we're obviously doing this interview podcast I think that you are a real asset for the industry because being a great athlete on stage and being a great individual and a professional off stage as well is really important because people look up to athletes like yourself and the Chris Bumsteads and the Ramones and the classic division and I've only just mentioned these athletes because obviously they're in the same division as you um, and these athletes self-inspire people because of their physiques, but they also self-motivate people and self-inspire people because of their individual personalities off stage as well. And we only have to think about how Chris Bumstead has, has, has stepped into a, p a position of immense authority with his ability of just being real, all right? And I love that about yourself. I think that you're a very real person. I don't feel that you're somebody who tries to walk up the ladder, as so to speak, of competitive places by just socializing with people which appear to be fake, if that makes sense. I like the fact that you're walking down your own path and you're always very respectful against your fellow athletes and also the individuals which obviously make this amazing industry what it is and obviously IFBB Pro League, MPC Worldwide, uh, obviously you're a part of that whole journey with them. So I think that you're a great asset to, to those federations, to be honest with you. That was great. 
but let's dive deeper into different diets. I know you are one of the best coaches around the world and you have your own ways to go, your own style of diet, your own style of coaching. Tell me more about that. How did you get all the experience throughout the years to nail it pretty much every time since we're working together 2019 almost five years mm -hmm. um, which is basically funny you replied the first of january i oh, sent you an email 31st of december right okay. before new year's eve and you answered straight away i really appreciate that okay. well i must have had five minutes at that time because i work you know obviously extended hours i don't think that i have a coaching style mike and i think it would be wrong I think there's characteristics about my cut, my coaching, which are going to be very, very similar. I think that a lot of people actually have got a, um, an unclear picture of who I am and how I am as a coach. I'm somebody, which you know, because you've had your own experiences with me. I'm very direct. I'm very honest. I'm very sincere. I'm very real. But I don't have time for bullshit, right? And for some people, they don't, take that constructive honesty and criticism well because they they don't like to be told that they're not working hard enough they don't like to be told that they're not as great as they think they are because a lot of those individuals are, are around cheerleaders now those cheerleaders aren't necessarily a negative influence on their lives but the trouble is is that when somebody is chasing something and then no they're nowhere near at that goal or that finish line, but they're looking at an individual which is. They only see greatness in that person. They don't see anything other than the finished product at the time. They don't realize which has gone through the process. And in most cases, there's always going to be somebody better, right? So we are exactly three weeks out from the 2024 60th anniversary, Joe Weeders, Mr. Olympia in Las Vegas. The standard is going to be absolutely electrifying. I, I honestly believe that this year's Mr. Olympia throughout all the divisions are going to be the most competitive ever. Now, I am going to go back to the golden era, not necessarily because I'm from that golden era, but I competed as an IFBB professional, right? I was an open class athlete. Why? Because there was no 202, there was no 212 division. So it was just open class bodybuilding. Everything I've learned, everything I've learned is being from my own experiences. But I try to dissect things in a methodical, common sense way, right? I think that when you have a Pacific standard coaching style or standard way of diet, It's not going to work for everybody because we do have to understand that people are different, right? Hormonally, people, some people can work really well with high carbs. Some people have to be very low carbs. Some people have to be very mindful of how they're stagging their carbs, whether they're going to be pushing hard on the carb, carb intake early on the day and they back off secondary. Me personally, I don't feel that the body dictates indirectly your ability to utilize carbohydrates just on somebody who is, appears to be carb sensitive. I feel that in a lot of cases, people innocently create the problem. They potentially downregulate their ability to utilize carbohydrates as a fuel. I'm not an ketogenic coach. I never have been. Do I think or feel that an ketogenic diet can work really well for some people? I do, okay? I'm not an expert in that chosen field. You know, Dave Colombo comes to mind, incredible coach, right? I have a huge amount of respect for Dave, um, what, he, what he does within the industry, because he's very knowledgeable. And Dave is very, very good at sitting down when somebody has an objective or a, a different opinion of him and his thought process. And he's more than happy to sit down, right, and discuss. He's not somebody who, does, who dismisses, right? But in general terms, I think that Dave is somebody who is very known, much known for his ketogenic diets. But I'm sure there's times where Dave has had to change his approach to an athlete or a client because he realizes their body are going to be able to adapt or they're going to do really well in a different format. And what I'm trying to say to you is that my coaching style is I'm direct, I'm honest, I'm transparent, but my intentions are always good. And what I say to all my clients is, we're not chasing places, we're chasing the look. 
Because if you bring the look, the place is going to come. And when you stepped on stage at the early years of your professional career, the division has changed, Mike. That classic division has gone scary, right? It's, it's a really scary time for any athlete or coach going into this year's Olympia. I don't know how many classic physique athletes which have qualified for that division, but... Um, I guess it's, it's 50. Yeah, 50. Okay, so there's 50 world-class athletes. And of course, some of that, those athletes are going to be at different levels. All right. I feel that the, the classic division is just everything what bodybuilding is in my imagination. I also feel that in some cases, athletes are being rewarded with places because of their conditioning. But they're not classic physique. They hit the height category. They hit the weight category. All right. Um, and I don't say that in a dis disrespectful manner because I've judged shows in the past. So I understand that judging isn't just as simple as that. Um, there's a criteria or there's, a, there's a, an ideal fit, but sometimes you're judging um, a competitive lineup and nobody really f perfectly fits in that box. You have to make a decision on who's that best athlete on that given day. Sometimes you're going to give it to the athlete which maybe has the better shape and structure, maybe not quite so conditioned. Sometimes you are going to go for the more conditioned athlete which doesn't have the best structure. But that on that Olympia stage, you're talking about the world's best athletes. So to me, the classic division of the Mr. Olympia, you have to be classic bodybuilding. It can't just be, well, you hit the weight and you hit the weight category, all right? And even though I've gone, tran I transitioned from one complete subject to another, and that is the fact that what is my coaching style? What is my method? I'm trying to say to you, it's not fixed, all right? When it comes to our division, we have a height and we have a weight category, but there comes a point where you have to make a decision. What is it you're, re what you're really looking at? What does the individual have that somebody else doesn't have? And you know, for me, it was something that uh, I believe that um, Lila Brada said many years ago, you're only as strong as your weakest muscle group. And Lila Brada was my favorite all-time bodybuilder because I was able to relate to him because he was roughly my height, my structure, my muscle size. So I was able to relate to somebody who was highly competitive in the open class bodybuilding scene. And if we were to bring Lee Labrada from his past and bring him into the present day, he'd be stepping on stage, right? Either as a 202 class athlete, but more likely he's going to be a classic bodybuilder, you know, a classic bodybuilder. And I think that um, it's important that when you work with athletes, whether it's classic, whether it's men's physique, whether it's open class, whether it's 212, and I have four different athletes going into this year's Mr. Olympia, my approach with their diets are different. And they have to be because they respond differently. The basics and the fundamentals are potentially going to be the same for everybody. But you have to be open-minded and you have to adapt because as somebody's physique is changing through the many layers and many days and weeks and months of pre-contest prep, you can optimize food types very, very well and more efficiently in the latter stages of contest prep. Very interesting. What I can definitely say is that you're one of the straightest persons, one of the most precise persons and one of the most reliable persons. And there are no, not many people in my very, very inner circle, maybe four or five, you're definitely one of them. So <laughs> my WhatsApp, there are three people which are pin, pinned in mm -hmm. on the top. This is my dad, Shani, and you. Mm -hmm. So that, that says a lot. From the past, I can say, and that's what I recommend to everyone who's looking for a coaching, try to get a coach like Neil. And this is not because you're my coach. It's just the fact that if you want to get better and you want to improve, there has to be someone who tells you where you can improve. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that hurts. It yeah. also hurts me. And I'm very straight and honest like you. But sometimes words can hurt, mm -hmm. but it has to be to develop and mm -hmm. improve yourself. Let's talk about the world's famous Y3T workout protocol. I know so many people around the world, everywhere, different countries, different continents, performing Y3T workouts. 
how you designed or what was the thought behind this specific protocol? What is it especially? How does it work? And is it for everyone? Okay, so I came across my coaching style, my training style, just by accident. So I was a, a huge hyper responder, Mike. I built muscle very easy. So building muscle came very easy for me. Easy as long as I applied myself. Diet, rest, recovery, training application, exercise, execution, etc. And just making sure I was in an environment for accountability. Accountable to making sure I'm doing what I need to do in order to progress, right? So you could say all those variables I've just spoken about are all important variables which have to be considered um, and implemented in some form of progressive overload. I think that people think about progressive overload as just as lifting as heavy as you can and do more repetitions. No, you can manipulate progressive overload in multiple different areas of the ability of recovery, maximizing hormonal responses, helping an, up, uh, an uptake in adequate or maximizing digestive health, right? So, you know, that subject in itself is very, very broad. But the problem for me is I was a hyper responder with building muscle tissue, but I was a hyper responder of picking up tendonitis because my strength would go up, my muscle mass would go up at a faster rate than my, uh, my tendon's ability to sustain that progressive overload environment. So I was picking up a lot of tendonitis and this happened for two, three, two, two or three years. I sometimes would spend more time not training a muscle group because of tendonitis. But you also have to understand, I lived in a tiny little seaside village in the middle of nowhere. I couldn't ask anyone for any help or advice because there wasn't anybody there, okay? Um, so everything was trial and error. So I just innocently changed my training and started to implement more higher reps, hoping that it would subside or decrease my ability of picking up tendonitis. I would be forcing nutrient rich blood into the muscle, which is so important for a recovery process anyway, whether it's muscle tissue, whether it's ligament or tendon. Things can be very different now because we can manipulate recovery very efficiently through the form of positive um, peptide use, so whether it's BPC-157, whether it's TB-500, and you know, there are new peptides being developed, you know, pretty rapidly, right? Sometimes it takes time for people to actually be aware of these. But back then, none of those things were, were available for me. So in my subconscious, I thought, right, okay, if I train really light and I do more repetitions, then I'm gonna get some form of muscle atrophy but at least I'm not losing all of my muscle because, because if I didn't train it at all, then obviously I would be losing muscle mass. But what I found is I found that an, up, an increase in muscle mass I found by doing high reps, not only was I seeing an increase in muscle mass, my overall joint health was better. My so-called risk of injury or the flare-up of tendonitis was getting so much lesser. And I didn't know that there was different muscle fibers in the body. I didn't know that there was different forms of hypertrophy. Like, it seems like the cool word now where people say, I'm doing hypertrophy training. But what are you doing? Yeah, I'm just doing this. But what are you doing? They don't know the difference between myrofibia or sarcoplasmic. They don't understand that different energy systems come into play. They don't understand the mechanical... Uh, association from bringing large motor unit recruitment in early and the benefits from that. And I'm not saying that they necessarily have to know that because it would be like having, I don't think it's essential that somebody who is very serious about their training has to know the exact protein profile of every food. As long as you know that it's essential that the proteins you consume have all of the essential building blocks and amino acids. Do you need to know any more than that? Probably not, because otherwise then some people start to overanalyze and, and then start become very confused. And the problem is when you speak to individuals or, which are potentially experts in their chosen field and the same field, but they have slightly different thought processes, that creates more confusion, right? So to me, it's just like keep things very, very basic. Right, keep it very basic. And with Y3T, it instantly happened because of injuries. And over an extended period of time, I realized by microcycling my training, doing heavy weeks, 
doing medium weeks and doing high rep weeks, they all had abilities of advancing and accelerating growth and development, a reduction in injuries. You could indirectly say on a week three workout when reps are very high, it's like deloading, right? So it's like a deload week. <laughs> But the intensity is not like deloading. And you've had your own experience with me, right? When you came over and stayed with me and we met for the very first time and you came over and stayed with me in Boca Raton and we trained together, um, I think that was one of the best things that ever happened. Coach, I'm sorry, I need to tell you. We <laughs> recorded a video, maybe you remember. It was the end of the workout. We did the walking lunges outside in Florida. Yeah. Hell of a heat outside. And we are so close to collapse. You're talking in front of the camera, me, Alex, and... I, th I think Oswaldo. No, not Oswaldo. Oh, my gosh. He had big boots. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I'm trying to, I, I can't. Omar, 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 Omar. 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 Yeah, yeah, Omar. And we were, like, like dizzy and, like, close to collapse, and we were waiting until you're finishing your sentence to say, <laughs> hey, coach, please, let's go back inside. <laughs> and we're like, oh, like that. <laughs> so funny. It was one of the most intense leg workouts I've ever had. I was sitting down on the floor and I was not able to move my legs. Yeah. You remember, you made bad jokes. Yeah, but the thing is, even though that was a really hard workout, the total amount of sets were not that high. Eight? Yeah, That's eight working sets, right? So, um, um, you know, how I think of things, like, so for instance, Milos, incredibly intelligent, smart coach in the industry, um, his ideal of high intensity or high volume training is different to mine, okay? So, um, and I think that's really good and I think it's really important, right? And I think what I'm trying to say is that how I feel or program a program compared to somebody else may be very, very different, but the total amount of sets that we did in those workouts were not that high. The reps were high and the intensity was high, but again, intensity, I think that's a misused word as well because intensity isn't just training as hard as you can, right? Because you can train as hard as you can, but if you're indirectly down-regulating the ability of an uptake in muscle fiber activation, then the intensity really isn't that high. So it's mindset, it's application, it's how you create the most amount of mechanical tension indirectly or positive tension, bringing in large motor unit recruitment when needed, depending on the rep range, et cetera. Um, and you, with Y3T, as long as you apply it correctly, it has massive benefits. You know, I think this subject and this, this question is very broad. It's something that we could talk about for hours and hours and hours. But I have no doubts that whether it's a beginner or whether it's somebody at the most advanced, Y3T has huge benefits for everyone. What's really important is that you learn the fundamentals of training. You learn the fundamentals and the basic of exercise application, making sure your movement patterns are in line. I feel that it's important that before you start throwing too many variables together, you, you really got to make sure that you have um, the basics in place. So could uh, a beginner athlete start using Y3T? Yes, they could, but I wouldn't advise them to because I think that they need to make sure that they get used to the fundamentals first before they go into the approach. Because although I feel, otherwise I feel it, there will be too much confusion. So um, even though you can apply to a basic individual to start in, it's definitely something which would be incredibly beneficial for an, a big, uh, as a, a medium or a very high level advanced athlete. So whether that's an advanced high level amateur or the highest advanced athlete as a professional bodybuilder, because the results can be incredible. And it's not just, as I said, it's not just about building muscle tissue, injury prevention, time under tension. Yeah, there's many ways that you can manip manipulate Y3T efficiently. In the past, I've been through different, different, different types of Y3T protocols. And mm -hmm. basically, it's three different weeks. Yep. No week number one is lower reps between eight to 12, yep. higher loads, more compounds mm -hmm. like squats, barbell rowing week number two which is my favorite yep. rep range between 12 and 16 yeah perfect for me 
not too much weight but still a very good squeeze good stretch like very very high quality reps mm -hmm. and of course i call it hell week yeah week number three reps up like 60 to maximum of 30 to 60 reps mm -hmm. drop sets this will give you three different types of stimulus yep and honestly i would say everyone could use y3t as a beginner and a high level professional as long as you you don't need to ask questions as you follow the protocol it's going to work yep of course as a beginner it's confusing yep. different rep ranges different machines different tempos different rest periods but as long as you follow the protocol it will 100% mm -hmm. work yeah the results speak for themselves mike you know it and we talk about the fact that people are individual so diets have to be different and you, we could say the same for training, right? But why 3 et is different? Because depending on the individual and depending on how they respond. So for instance, for you, um, week two is my favorite week, the same as you, because I feel that week two is the perfect hybrid week, right? So you're able to bring in myofibia and sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. And I feel that there's no confusion there, right? I feel that, and you can, I tend to find that I feel feel it within the muscle when I see a changeover, right, of going into myrofib, from, go, going in from sarcoplasmic into myrofibia. I feel like also when I, I know when large motor unit recruitment is coming in earlier um, with, with Y3T. But with Y3T, when you, when you program those weeks, you might be somebody who I will program where even though it's a three-week program, it might be a five-week program because with you, it could be week one the first week, week one the second week, week one the third week, week two the fourth week, and then week three on the fifth week. And then we rotate again, then we rotate. With somebody else, it could be week one, week two, week two, week three. With somebody else, it could be week one, week two, week three, week three, back to week one. And in order to be able to design the most optimal program. Of course, you need to coach somebody. You need to, because you're trying to get that data from them. It's no different than you coaching somebody. You design a program or a, a meal plan based on the information that they provided from maybe a questionnaire. You feel, hey, okay, I feel this meal plan I've designed for you custom is gonna work well. It's most likely at some point you're gonna make, you're gonna make some minor changes, micro changes to that meal plan, right? Because either maybe you feel that maybe you can increase calories, maybe those calories are coming from carbs, maybe they're coming from fats. Maybe you feel that you've got to, uh, you've got to focus a little bit more on digestive health. Not because you haven't focused on digestive health in the very beginning, but because maybe they have some mild intolerances and you've got to get some tolerance and testing done because even though most people will not realize that they have intolerances or mild intolerances to foods which are supposed to be healthy, right? So there's many variables that you have to take into consideration. But Y3T, I've just seen 100% consistency with it. And I'm not here trying to sell Y3T to this video because to be honest with you, I don't want this video to be about me. I want this video to be about you because you're the person, Mike, who has been working his ass off over the last 18 or 20 weeks. Do you know what I mean? So I appreciate the opportunity of being a part of your YouTube channel and everything you do, whether this is going to be a podcast or whatever. But I'm just selfishly glad that I've got you and Shani now in the city. So we have some, some time alone. Um, and also that you've got that personal time with me, especially in the most critical parts of um, pre-contest prep. I know for the viewer, they may say, hey, listen, we want to hear your perspective, coach, because we know about Mike. We want to know more about you. But I don't get enough time with you as it is. Does that make sense? And I don't need a camera in my face for me to talk about myself. I don't seek that attention, but I understand it's not, it's not a sense of, a, 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 for you, it's not a sense of a seeking attention for me. It's more of getting that information so you can provide it for the next generation of Mike Summerfield athletes because, <laughs> because you know, you're at the top of your game, Mike, and I feel that you've got an extended period of time in this industry, right? But there's the next generation of athletes and it's exciting, right? You know, the IFBB Pro League and NPC Worldwide have really grown and matured. And I really like, I really like the way that 
Tyler has, has taken that, that, that state of authority in that position. I really like the fact that he dissects shows after the events, talks about the divisions, speaks about why that we've gone for this place and that's never taken place before so much I, transparency. Now there's, yeah it was transparency but it's also it, it's growing because they see that the industry can be so much more than what it was and it wasn't because they wasn't putting their attention into it years ago things change right there's more divisions now than there ever was before i wouldn't be surprised if they they form another division at some point who who knows i think they could probably I personally feel that they could actually form two more divisions. Have I heard them going to do that? No, but I think that they could form a muscular physique, a muscular men's physique. So it's an athlete who's really muscular and he doesn't, he should not be in that men's physique category. And I also feel that they could create another division, which is not classic because some of those athletes in that division, they're not classic bodybuilders. They are bodybuilders who maybe don't quite fit into that box, maybe they have the ability to build that kind of muscle, but they fit the criteria of height and weight, all right? Who would have thought 10 years ago that MPC and MPC Worldwide were gonna be bringing all these new divisions in? It's amazing, right? Because they're very open-minded with, with how they're looking. And I think that um, the message in this is that you have to be open-minded with your approach to what you're doing and don't be one dimensional. And Y3T is a three dimensional training protocol. That's exactly what it is. To finish that, I just want to mention, and that's especially for you guys, you can, you can find Neil Hill in the description below. I'm gonna add his shop, his website, his Instagram, and some of his YouTube stuff as well. If you're interested in Y3T and learn more about it, just hit the links in the description below. It's absolutely worth it. If you want to learn something for the future to increase your training style, Y3T is the shot. All right, coach. Next and last question. We're working together since five years. And I know 100% that I changed my look throughout the years. I knew in the beginning that my physique is, will fit into the classic. But now we're on a point where we can say, okay, this is truly classic mm -hmm. and we are playing on, <laughs> that's the top of the world. Mm -hmm. I need to remind myself again and again that it's, it's not just a regular pro show, yeah. it's the Olympia. Yeah. And we're talking about top 10 placings, yeah. which is, we're talking about the best 10 athletes on this planet Earth. So my look changed throughout the last five years. What are your expectations for the next few years? And I remember you said something a year, two years ago. No, a year ago. We posed together and you said, it's a shame that you need to lose more pounds. It would look amazing as a 212. Now we're going to hit the 212 number in about two weeks, three weeks from now. What would you say your expectations? Placing, maybe comparison to another 212 athlete. I'm still classic, we know mm -hmm. that. But weight and height is quite similar to mm -hmm. a 212, maybe a little bit taller. But I want to know your thoughts about it. Okay. Um, Mike, the, 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 the strengths in your physique... is your clean skin, your image, your shape, your structure, your muscle, everything just flows. Everything just synergistically, naturally gathers together. Now let's go back many, many years. Flex Lewis, seven times 212, Mr. Olympia champion, right? A very iconic bodybuilder within the industry. I was at every single photo shoot post Olympia, that Flex done when he was, when he had won the Mr. Olympia title. So I was there with Flex Magazine when Flex Magazine was shooting him with Per Bernal and all these amazing photographers the day after the show. And I can remember, let's just say for instance, that Per Bernal took 200 pictures. There was probably only 10 or 15 pictures at the most, which were good enough for the magazine because 
even though Flex had just won the 212 Mr. Olympia, he didn't have the density and the, 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 the 3D look to his muscle back then. Understand? Mm -hmm. And he would have seen it himself. We would speak about it. We'd be like, oh, I don't like that. We don't like that. But what happened every year, you would see his physique filling, up, filling in gaps. He become more complete, more complete, more. Co he, he went from being a one-dimensional to a two-dimensional to a three-dimensional physique. So what does that mean? When I think about three-dimensional, it means you can put somebody in nearly any position in any pose, and you don't see gaps. You just see like, fuck, that looks fantastic. And I remember seeing the pictures from Per Bernal in Flex's last video last video stroke photo shoot, 2018, day after he won his last Mr. Olympia, seven Mr. Olympia, there was no bad pictures. There was no bad pictures, Mike. You couldn't pick a bad picture because he was so damn complete. Do you understand? And that's where I feel that you are this year. We're looking at your physique and it's like, can't feel, can't see gaps now. So even though weight may be similar, the look and the dimension is very, very different. And I genuinely believe that if we can bring that polishing last piece of the jigsaw with the right amount of conditioning, it doesn't have to be the hardest, the driest, the most separated muscle or athlete, but it's the most polished. I feel that you're going to be, you're potentially going to be the upset of the show. Now, do I think that you could win the Olympia this year? No, I'm being very transparent and honest. But do I think that you have the ability to get your best ever, ever, ever Olympia place in and hurt a lot of feelings on stage? 100%. Okay, 100%. I, I genuinely believe that. Now, am I overconfident? No, because we still have a lot of work to do. And I also understand the depth of talent out there. And even if we bring the look that we really want and we nail it, the industry has got so much more athletes out there today. I'm just excited for you to get on stage and showcase this new version of you because I know for a fact it's a fucking lot better now than it was last year. And I do feel that you've got better and I do feel that you've got better and I do feel that you've got better. So I'm just looking forward to the latter stages, you know, with exactly 21 days out. Okay, what is it? September, Saturday the 21st, right? Yeah, I think it's the 21st today. It's Saturday, you're gonna be stepping on stage for pre-judging. In fact, pre-judging would have already taken place. We would already know whether you are going into the finals and if you've got a good chance of finals, what's taking place in finals. But I am just looking forward to the, the, the last process. There's still a lot of work to do, all right? But you're in a great place. You know that. And it's not a sense of arrogance you just know when things are clicking. But we've seen it before where athletes are looking incredible, two weeks out, three weeks out, one out, week out, and then it just doesn't go well in the last process. Your physique is different. So I can't ever think, well, let's see what we did last year. I can't even think about what we did last year, Mike, because we're doing things now this year with your foods that we didn't do you know, the year before and how we're implementing and how we're manipulating things are different. So we've got to obviously take those things into consideration, but you, you're going to be, you're going to, there is no doubt that you're going to be a very much improved 3D athlete on that stage. It's not possible not to see it. It's going to be very recognizable. recognizable. Different athlete, half our Brando. We worked together for our very first year this year. Okay. We did the Arnold's. Hafel stepped on stage about 16 or 18 pound heavier than he ever did in his last show. He was at least 16 pound heavier on stage, Mike. 16 pounds heavier on stage. That's not me exaggerating. He was 16 pounds heavier on stage than his last show. And it was very, it, it was in your face. It's noticeable, all right? And I can remember comments being made from, you know, people in, 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 in states of authority in our industry who were making some very positive compliments about his physique. The improvements were very noticeable. And I honestly feel that the, the improvements with you are going to be just as in your face as Hafel, because even though Hafel stepped on stage, obviously X amount pounds heavier, it was all the other intricacy and the details that came through with it as well, right? So um, I'm excited. I'm nervous. Um, but I'm confident that you're going to bring, you know, a, a display of just <laughs> impeccable balance, mate.
and you've got skin, you're a good looking guy, you've got height, you've got structure, you've got great skin, you've got refined muscle bellies, you know, like you just got flow, Mike, you just got absolute flow and of really flowing physique in condition is always gonna draw the attention of a judge because you've also got that shape as well. You are a classic bodybuilder. You know, you could say that you are a bodybuilder, okay? You were a bodybuilder. Keon Pearson, right? He's a 212 bodybuilder, but his shape and structure is beautiful. Absolutely. That's That's fucking, that's classic bodybuilding. Classic bodybuilding is Keon. You're classic bodybuilding. You just got this, you do a front door bicep or a front lat spread and you're like, that's beautiful. People don't just go, oh my gosh, look at the size. No, it's just art, Mike. And I honestly think a front door bicep pose and a front lat spread, it says everything about whether you're classic or whether you're a bodybuilder. And even though obviously Keon is 212 Mr. Olympia champion, incredible bodybuilder, um, Patrick, one of my very good friends, or obviously uh, fellow coaches within the Yamamoto team, coaches him. You know, the reason I compare you is because your front double bicep pose, it sets the standard of what I call classic and everything flows. It's not just like you've got two good poses. No, Mike, you've got like you're, you're a strong athlete. So um, final prep of Olympia will be interesting. Wow, I'm very, very excited. What I can promise is that there was not a single day I did everything possibly to get the best result this year. Mm -hmm. um, I was following strictly the protocol. We off season was amazing. Diet was amazing. No complications. And now I'm here right next to you. Mm -hmm. There's nothing we can go wrong in my opinion. I'm just following your protocols and it's going to be fine. You know what to do. You know your business. You know the job. I will be in shape. I will make weight. Everything will be fine. I'm working. I'm doing everything I can. I do the posing, the cardio, the foods, the workouts. Nothing to be upset about. Mm -hmm. I'm absolutely happy. My mental place right now. I'm so relaxed. I know what to do. The game plan is set and this gives me so much peace. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Amazing interview. Thank you so much. I just want to finish this off with one thing. I want to say massive thank you for this opportunity to obviously have my time with you, all right? Obviously in front of the camera as well. But let me also say, and you never, and you never neglect this. I've spoken to you about this before. A huge part of your ability to progress in life is your gorgeous, beautiful wife. Definitely. And um, I wanted to mention that as well. And, um, and uh, for me, it's always going to be a sense of relief, right? When you know that your athlete's partner is a great partner, all right? A great partner isn't somebody who's going to love your husband or love your, their wife when they're being an asshole. It's somebody who's going to be supportive, caring, and understanding, but sometimes somebody who was also going to be strong and say, hey, no, listen, it's not just all about you because we become as a, 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 we're a team, right? And I feel that, you know, since Shani entered your life, Mike, I feel that you, I wouldn't say necessarily that you're a different person because you've always been a great person. I just feel that it's brought the, a, a piece of the jigsaw which was missing and that piece is a piece that has to be put into place because if you don't have that piece, that picture is broken. It's not, it's not in place. So I just want to say a massive shout out to Shani as well because she's a huge part of your success as an athlete, as an individual, but also where you are with your physique as well. You guys are an amazing team. Like, you're a fucking amazing team. I, I can't tell you how amazing she really is. There was not a single time we've been together, we had a true argument. Sometimes I'm, you know, a bitch. Sorry to say that, but it's true. And she's like, hey, Mike, you know what? You're a bit of a bitch today. I was like, yeah, you're right. That and that is the reason. She was like, yeah, I know. Don't worry. I'll here for you. I'll be here for you. Same with her. Sometimes mm -hmm. she has a bad day. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling her, you know what? You're a little bitch. Yeah, you know, this and that. Yeah, no problem. 
I'm here for you. We're working as a team. Truly, mm. there's not a single situation where I felt that we're working against each other. Not a single second. And we travel the world. We've been in so many different difficult places in the yeah. jungle, in the desert. And there was not a single moment where I doubted that this is not going to work. I can rely whatever she says is right. Whatever she says, I know has a positive intention behind. Mm -hmm. This gives me so much peace. Yeah. Coach, thank you so much. You're welcome. Don't forget to check out the description below. Find Neil and see what he, he's got for you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much and see you next time. Thank you too. Good job. That was a fucking one shot.